G'day. I got to a bit of an impasse with the, uh, the Taylor Taylor Hobson um, castings. I needed to pick up where the centre of this radius was, but the tool I had uh, wouldn't do it. And so that got me thinking. And as a result, I came up with a, a brand new device um, and that'll locate in a chuck. And there's the lever for the um, DTI. Uh, but that will enable me to swing that around the center line of the, uh, the chuck and pick up that radius or pick up any radius from, from around about uh, zero out to uh, oh, 80, 90 millimeters. So uh, I think this is a, 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 a nice bit of work and uh, so I've, I've shown the, the process I've used to make it. Uh, hidden down the back end there are some drawings so if anybody wants to make one, uh, feel free. So what are the good and bad bits about this? Well, the original design had a stepped um, shank here to grab onto. I took one of the steps out, but in reality, that's not necessary because all my drill chucks are uh, 12 millimeter or half inch. And so I can have a, a say a 10 mil shank on there without any steps and that'll be fine. Uh, one of the things that would worry me about grabbing up the top there is that mm, there's a possibility of some flex because it's a thinner section. So that I, I think could be changed. Um, one of the problems with this whole carriage deal is that when you're working close to the to the axis, uh, it's a bit difficult to read this dial. Now, if you used a, a, a vertical version um, of, a, of a, a dial test indicator, you'd have it here, but then again, you have to use a mirror to see what's happening. So um, I prefer using the vertical style of, of um, uh, DTI, but it, it is obscured by all this lot here. You have two sorts of adjustment. You've got a coarse adjustment where you can just slide that back and forth where you want it. And then you have another form here, a fine adjustment, um, that can just uh, bring that in and out. Now that's actually quite good. Um, the, the indicator itself attaches with a, with a, a, a screw here onto a, uh, a clamp arrangement. Uh, that's not too awful, but um, you know, it, you, you need to form that dovetail properly, so um, that can be interesting. But, you know, all up, it's, it's, it's not a bad thing. Um, well, the other, other problem I have with it, I guess, is that I can either use that like that, or I can reverse it. And that's a good thing, except that that uses up a mighty lot of, of radial dimension from there to there. So there is actually a spot where, you know, you can go from here into about there somewhere. And if you turn it around, you can go from sort of there out to about there somewhere. But there is actually a, a little spot in the middle there where it doesn't quite work. So anyway, that's a, that's a quick review of this. Um, and I'll end up taking apart this apart and use some of the bits, like some of the, the knobs and things and the, and the rods perhaps, to work to make my new one. I've just started doing the, the roughing out for what I'm referring to as the base piece. It's a, it's a weird looking bit of stuff, which you'll see in a moment, but basically I now need to take out this piece and this piece. Now, the reason I'm showing this to you is that I've actually drawn on text on the part which bits I, I need to remove. I don't normally do that, but it's complicated enough that I don't want to go taking on the mirror image cut of, of one and leaving the other one because I, I wouldn't be able to salvage the piece. So um, it's something you can do. Uh, I'm using the, the DRO to get my dimensions, so this is just a rough guide, but yeah, I need to remove this piece, and then I need to remove that piece, uh, and then there'll be a hole drilled and tapped in there, and a couple of holes uh, drilled and reamed in there. One thing to note here, um, if I just clamp this up here, I'd be clamping across there, this end would be floating in the breeze. So what I've done, I've just got a scrap bit of material, doesn't matter what size it is really, as long as it's big enough here. I've knocked this down onto the parallels, so that's, I've got my vertical height set, and then this one I've got on the jaw here to push against there. So I've got far more clamping area, I guess, on the on the back here uh, than I would have if I clamped here. So it's just a way of getting a more secure um, uh, part clamping. There's the weird little base piece. Um, as you can see, it's. I guess you could have fabricated that, but. Um, Machining for something this size, machining is probably just as easy. 
I put a chamfer on there, there and there and then cleaned them up with a warded file. A warded file is one where the edge has been taken off so it doesn't cut on the side, it just cuts down. Um, two different reasons for doing that. This one here is for better visibility of, of the, um, the dial. Uh, I intend to use this dial on it again and as you can see it's, it's vertical so if I have that there it means I've got a, just a little bit better visibility around the dial. This chamfer here is, is purely for clearance. I've got rods coming out of here uh, and then I'm going to have to have a bracket that kicks back and that's to get around the second of the problems with the, uh, the existing design um, and so that's, that's been put in there for that. Other than that uh, I haven't put the holes in, in here. I have tapped a, a, an M6 hole there for a, a, a spindle uh, but that's a, that's a finishing touch. That's a, 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 you know, a later thing. As you can see I've shaped my intermediate piece and this is going to go like so. So you can see the, the roll of that chamfer there and, and also of that one there, it's, it's clearance. This one here, a similarly clearance for the, the part that goes in here to hold the, the dial. However, what I need to do now is get these all lined up and then I'm going to clamp that together, drill a hole through ream so I've got something to put my, my pins into. Um, once I've got both holes I'll then install those in there, glue, the, glue them in with some Loctite, uh, put this right down the other end to hold everything parallel and, uh, and let that set and that'll, that'll give me my, uh, my sliding axis. I still need to work out what I'm going to do about uh, clamping that, it'll probably be just a, a, a screw on the outside um, but um, this is probably one of the, the most ticklish bits because um, the holes need to be you know, relatively close uh, tolerance uh, so they need to be reamed. They also need to be, you know, pretty good centre to centre. So uh, that's that's how I'm going to do that bit. So just running through this operation, um, I've, I've got one hole done. I need to do the second one. So I had those all squared up. Centre drill to get the, the position. Small drill. This is, I think is a D size. It's about 0.1 underneath the reamer size. And then a reamer through to take that out. I've now got a, um, a quarter inch pin. Uh, it looks suspiciously like the end of a broken tap, but of course I, like every other YouTube machine, never break taps and so never save the, uh, the bits of, of ground steel in case they come in handy. If I did use a bit of tap like that, I could then use that to line up the holes, clamp that up again and then drill and ream this one here and I'd have a, a pretty good chance of them being in the, in the, in the right position because that pin is a, is a, is a tight fit. Uh, if I had a quarter inch dowel of the right length uh, I could use that. Um, gauge pin, the only problem is that my clamp is a bit wide and so it's, it's, um, I, can't, I can't have anything that's, that sticks up otherwise I, I, I miss the, um, the hole, it gets in the way. But that's how I'm doing that. So I'm now going to do the second one uh, and then I'll be able to uh, uh, get my, my guide pins, uh, lock tight those in place and as I said have these two up here like so and that way they stay parallel when they're uh, lock tighted together. This piece is going to be the, uh, the carrier for the uh, DTI and it's got a dovetail on it. Now there are a couple of ways you can make the dovetail. On the original build notes for the, uh, the zero it, um, they suggested just filing that out with a triangular file and it's not too big, you could do that. Um, a nice way to do it if you had a cutter small enough would be a, a dovetail cutter. But I'm going to do something a little bit interesting in that I'm going to put a slitting saw that I've got, which has got a bevel on it. And so I'm going to incline my head over to 30 degrees off vertical and then I'm going to run that down and use that to actually put my dovetail in. Um, I couldn't do this normally but I found this cutter and I've always wondered what I could use it for and this seems to be as good an application as any. So we'll see how that goes.
the way I'm going to hold the dial indicator into the into the uh, the carriage here is I've got some tapped holes in the back and I'll put some grub screws in there these are just normal screws but they'll illustrate the point and just with a little bit of pressure that'll hold that nicely there's actually on the on the dovetail strip here there's actually a little uh, dimple or hole recess so if I needed to get a positive lock I could even put a small pin in the end of the grub screw and locate into one of those things now to get to that so I can take it out without having to disassemble everything I've got some clearance holes here in the piece this bolts to and so to get my holes to line up for the adjustment mechanism I'm actually going to use the the grub screw hole or the, the tap grub screw holes and the clearance holes to hold the assembly together uh, and then I can um, match drill uh, the holes that go in here for the uh, adjusting screw and the two guides. Now when I did these holes here uh, I did those with a hand room because that's all I had. Um, they didn't work out as well as I would have liked. I had to do a little bit of tweaking to get them to, uh, to slide nicely. Uh, it was binding up right near the end. With these ones I do actually have a, uh, a chucking reamer so I can, I can do these ones here. Uh, M5, not a problem. And then do the middle one. Uh, and one side is just going to be a quarter inch. Uh, the other side gets to be tapped and that way I use the same adjuster that I've got that uh, I've taken off um, my uh, my zero it copy. The original zero it had a um, a screw like that going through thickness of material, and that gave you your fine adjustment. I'm going to do the same thing here, um, mainly because I've already made this thing. This is um, uh, 3 8 by 24 TPI, so a, a UNF thread, but it could be an M10 by 1. Um, really depends on what you know scheme you're working. Um, I need to shorten that, obviously, because it's a little bit too tall there. But that will then sit in there. Uh, there's a split pin that goes through there, roll pin. Um, and there'll be a couple of uh, guide rods that, that go through too, some, some M5 rod that I've got. Uh, and then that will work nicely. Uh, all I have to do then is put a, um, a, a clamp screw in here and a clamp screw on here and uh, make up the little um, uh, spindle to go in the chuck and I think I'm pretty much done. So here it is, the, uh, the finished item. Um, between the last time you saw it and now I've, I've added some uh, locking screws so that I can lock my uh, my coarse adjustment and also my fine adjustment. Um, I've put my uh, fine adjustment screw in there and, and lock tight it in the uh, the dowels that run as guides. Uh, the dial indicator, uh, the, the uh, DTI sorry, you might just be able to see there's a, uh, a grub screw in there. Uh, and so I've got a grub screw there and a grub screw there that are pushing that against the dovetail. That's accessible through these two holes here. So um, I can just slide that forward, undo that and slide that, uh, that indicator out. Uh, it's, um, it is or should be, uh, the stylus should be in line with the, radially in line with the, um, the stub to grab the, you know, put it in the chuck. So um, I think that's, uh, it's, it's actually turned out quite well. Um, I can get adjustment from down there, so what's that, probably about five millimetres or something like that, between there, uh, right out to there. So there's what, probably close to four. So uh, I think this should do the job. So I should be able to get back on to the uh, Taylor Taylor Hobson uh, castings now. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you for the next one.